So today we're going to be looking at not one, not two, but three righteous and radical dudes full of charisma and empathy by way of Shattered Glass Soundwave and by association Laserbeak and Ravage. And we're also going to point out a significant problem with having these guys be online exclusive. Stick around because we're going to cover everything to do with Soundwave and his boys in the latest Gapa True review. Hey one, hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, aka Gapot. As always, man, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it, light up my baby. Hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton, and it lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, all the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for, as well as all of my social media links. All of that in the description down below. Also in the description down below, and if you're in a position in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. You can check us out on Patreon, or of course, you can hit the join button at any given time and become a channel member, please and thank you. And this is Shattered Glass Soundwave. And I was excited to get this guy. Um, it doesn't, I had to source this uh, through our buddy Razor Bear, so I'm very, very, very thankful for his assistance in this. Recently, we have been taking a look back at a lot of the Transformers Prime Decepticons, and we're taking a little bit of a break today, but you might have noticed, if you've been following the channel, you might have noticed that uh, the last review we did on Friday past from this recording uh, was the Transformers Prime Deluxe Soundwave. So it seemed kind of fitting that if we were going to take a little bit of a break from that, that we would do so now with this. But as I mentioned, there was a problem, a breakage problem. But we're going to get into that as we go through. Pay attention. So without any further ado, we're going to head over to the table and take a closer look at these guys. And I think it's pretty appropriate to say that I'm both excited and terrified to be taking a look at the Shattered Glass version of Soundwave, and I suppose Laser Beacon Ravage as well. Uh, this is the Shattered Glass packaging, which I absolutely adore. Um, I do miss not having the plastic here, as a lot of people have mentioned. Of course, here we have our boy Soundwave, the, the morale officer, right? The guy who's going to bolster you up. He's over here, uh, over here as well. Um, and over here as well. Uh, nice artwork for Soundwave. And of course back here you have the bios and you can see both Ravage and Laserbeak and of course Soundwave himself. And we've got Shattered Glass instructions, I guess, if you need it. I, I mean, it's the Netflix Soundwave really, so if you know how to transform that, then you know how to transform this. As for the cassettes, I mean, again, we've gotten Laserbeak a couple of times, and we've gotten Ravage a couple of times. So there shouldn't be anything new transformation-wise here. Speaking of Laserbeak, here we have the Netflix one and the Shattered Glass one. I'm going to, do, I guess, do the transformation super quick here, where we bring out the uh, wings. By the way, I think these are painted. Um, bring down the little bird feet, I suppose, and... Really, we're going to want to, I always find this a nuisance to do. We're going to want to bring out, there we go. There, bring out the laser beak head and flip that up. And this is shattered glass laser beak. As for the Netflix one, I mean, exact same thing. Open it out. These go down. Um, this head is a little more of a nuisance and a chore to get out. Uh, let's see if I can let's see if I can actually get it out because it's his earth mode head instead of this which is surprisingly the Cybertronian mode head there we go we're just gonna lay him there like that so I mean like this is the Cybertronian take this is the earth take um, but like I like this and I think that all the red is paint I think the silver is paint I think the visor is paint um, I don't think the gunmetal gray is. I think the gunmetal gray is plastic, and I think, of course, the gray underneath is plastic. But, yeah, I mean, all you're really kind of doing is taking the black-gray colors and the red and inverting them, which makes sense. 
In terms of transformation, I don't know what I gave the original. Let's say the transformation's a 10 because it's very successful. The articulation, I mean, the head can move up and down. I guess the wings can move in and out. I don't really know what more you would want for articulation. I mean, it is what it is. In terms of look, I mean, shatter glass, um, uh, laser beak is shatter glass laser beak. I suppose the argument could be made if we're going by like the the fun pub continuity, um, you know, going kind of way back, you know, the head should be the earth head and the beak should be silver. Um, but besides that, this is fairly accurate. And whereas laser beak is kind of a cool hipster sort of guy, Ravage is a, a renowned microblogger who loves it and he basically speaks in no more than 140 characters. Now, in terms of representations of the character, man, it is wild when we talk about Shattered Glass Ravage. It depends on the continuity. For example, uh, the Beast Wars uh, Metals Jaguar, which is basically from Takara, and it's their Beast Wars um, um, Ravage, was, uh, like I think, made into Shattered Glass Ravage in the Recordicons. Same was the case, I think, for Transmetal 2 Tiger Hawk, which is so weird. Uh, there was a a tiger, uh, like a Batcon Tigatron repaint that, like again, was retconned as Shattered Glass Ravage. There's the weird Universe 2003 Razor Claw. Um, like there's a Kiss Players one that's based on the like G1, uh, the Timelines one which was that mold that came with uh, Classics Hound. And, of course, we have this one, largely based on the Fun Pub uh, look iteration of the character. Again, to do the transformation here, I'm going to try and do it somewhat quickly. Um, we bring up a paw, and we bring up a paw, and... Hmm... Yeah, so indeed you've noticed that I didn't actually do the transformation of this guy because uh, I broke it. Um, the handle here that's supposed to flip out uh, snapped right off. It's, it will hold fine for alt mode and stuff, but like it's never ever going to be used as a buckler or a shield or whatever. I don't care. I never ever in a billion years had any intention of doing that anyway, but it's worth noting, um, overall, I don't think that they did Ravage very well here. I don't know, it's a two or three. I don't think it was very good. Um, and I happened to break this one. How unfortunate. For me, this is the more important uh, comparison anyway. The Ravage I'll live with, like I said, I'm never going to use him as a buckler anyway. Um, I I'm cool with it. It was unfortunate that it broke, but what are you going to do? Um, you'll notice that my gray, my it's weird. There's two grays used on Soundwave. Some things ha tend to turn that weird, ugly, yellowy color. Some don't. The plastic that's a soft gray. And when I say soft gray, I mean it's obviously more in the realm of like a mix of yellows, oranges, and um, reds compared to a cool gray, which is obviously sh a sharper gray, uh, more associated with greens, blues, and purples. Anything that's this warm gray turns. It has nothing to do with being in direct sunlight. He is not in direct sunlight. In fact, he's hidden away quite a bit. Um, some parts here I actually changed out with the Siege version. And the Siege one is actually in a bag in my closet away from any light. Uh, if, before people say, well, maybe it's too hot. Um, no. Do you know where I live? I'm in the North Atlantic. It's definitely not too hot here. We don't, we don't really get too hot. We might get a week, maybe two in the summer where it might get uh, high 20s, maybe 30, 30. 34 Celsius, but that's only a week or two. Rest of the year, it's either temperate or like now, minus 25. So no, it's just the quality of the plastic. They didn't change plastics. They changed plastic suppliers to a cheaper supplier, and there's a reason that it was cheaper. I've done a lot of paint work on this guy um, to try and kind of minimize the shade changing. Luckily with this guy, he is still a nice stark white yet. If he changes, I guess I'll have to paint the white. Let's cross our fingers that it doesn't happen with the Shattered Glass version. Uh, yes, 
He can still put cassettes in his chest. In fact, this is Ravage in here now, uh, just to prove that Ravage still works just fine. Uh, this looks like Shattered Glass Soundwave so far. As I say that though, we're going to talk about it more when we get him in his robot mode. I'm going to take this guy out of it, um, though we will see him again in his robot mode as well. And let's do the transformation back to robot mode here because we already did the transformation going from robot to cassette player when we looked at the Netflix one way back in episode 802. That was, man, that was June of 2021, so about two years ago. Wild, wild. Um, so we already looked at the, the, the transformation, like I said, from robot to cassette player back then. I'll put a card or something up. So let's do it this way this time. Uh, on the back, by the way, you can see I have his accessories here. I'm gonna take that off, I'm gonna take that off, and I'm gonna take that off for now. Because why not? I like the look of this though. I really really do like the look of this Okay, so let's begin by folding in those Not that they tab on very well here though. They do tab on better here than on my Netflix sound wave We're going to pick this off and when we pick this off really there's this little edge goes in right here there's um, a Tab here that goes in right here. There's another tab right here that goes in to a slot right here. So there's three spots that have to line up uh, for that to tab in properly, really. Take it out on that side as well. And then we will turn the guy around. I'm going to split the arms and we're going to bring this arm around and I'm going to just bring it up over his head for now. Same here, we're going to bring this arm around. And again, there's a rectangular tab and a rectangular slot. So when you bring that back, it slots in up here via the shoulders and then the two arms slot into each other as you saw. I'm going to bring down a leg and down a leg and I'm going to turn our guy at the waist. I'm also going to open uh, his, I'm going to call it his foot, and open up the whole leg. There is. There's a peg back here that goes into a peg hole on the bottom of the foot. We fold this in and bring it down and turn the, the leg that way. Same over here. We open that out. We unpeg this peg from the bottom of the foot, fold that in, bring it down and turn it that way. I'm gonna stand our guy up to finish the rest. Okay, um, so now we're gonna bring this arm down and bring this arm down. We're gonna flip out a hand and turn the arm around, flip out a hand and turn the arm around. We're gonna open up the back of the guy and bring out his head. Bring that up and over. We're going to take his blaster and extend it and we'll, I guess, put that in his hand. His other accessory goes up there. And then, again, this one, like, I don't use it, but for now, I'm just gonna stick it here on the back just because I, I don't really have anywhere else to put it. But in the end, Boom, here we have Shattered Glass Soundwave in his robot mode. And here we have the two sound waves next to one another. Um, you know, I mean, <laughs> I guess they're both successful I, to, a, you know, to a degree. This guy, man, oh man, he should have been better than what he was. I'm so disappointed with the yellowing. And I was always disappointed with the yellow around here when it should have been gold. But that's, that's another story for another day, I digress taking him out of it. So this guy here, by the way, I looked at that other sound wave in episode 802, if I didn't already mention it. The very first version of Shattered Glass Soundwave that came out was the device label version, um, which basically I think was like an actual MP3 player. And that came out in 2007. And I think that was what the early comic was really based on. So based on that, the upper arm should be blue. The lower arm should be white. The head should still be blue, but that one doesn't have the, the headband. Uh, the entire front is white. The entire, like going right down his body, all white. That's not the most popularized form of the guy though. I would venture to say that the more popularized form of the guy came a little bit later, about five years later, with the invasion set from Botcon. Uh, it was part of Timelines in 2012. It, however, was a deluxe that used the 
Classics Universe Ratchet Ironhide mold that everybody kind of hates. Nevertheless, that one did establish the green headband. It did establish the upper arms being white with the blue on it and the lower arms being white. Uh, instead of the hands being white, the hands should be black. Uh, the blue on the pelvis, though the center of the pelvis should be black. Uh, the white thighs. Uh, the blue on the knees is a stylization. The blue feet was also established with that timeline's version. And then we got, of course, an e-hobby version that was really the G1 um, I, I, mold, I guess. Uh, and that one is very, very close to this. That came out a year later in 2013. So this is heavily based on the e-hobby one. The biggest difference with the e-hobby one, and I guess the classics one, is instead of all this being white, like the device label, the chest becomes blue. And I think I like the blue better because it's a breakup of a, a, a sea of white from the device label. So there's a lot of weird iterations for this guy. I'm going to give it... I'm going to give it, honestly, a 10 for the look. So the transformation, I think, works pretty splendid. Everything locks in and unlocks. I'm giving the transformation a 9. Um, the only thing that's a pain with it is this flap doesn't really like to tab in. So I'm going to say a 9 for the transformation, a 10 for the look of the guy. What about the articulation? Well, the head goes, goes left and right. Um... Hold on. Well, that's interesting. So my head doesn't move. Uh, arms go all the way around. Uh, all the way out to the side. Bicep swivel, elbow to 90 degrees. The wrist can go in. Nothing at the wrist, though. Uh, waist. So that's cool. Legs go all the way forward. Uh, they can go all the way back. Thigh swivel, knee to 90 degrees. Ankle tilt. Um, and in terms of splits, all the way out to the side, I will say this, the outward motion on these shoulders is a lot better than on the Netflix one, which is very overly tight. I'm just going to double check that head before I give him a score. Okay, so luckily I did get the head to move, it was just slightly stuck. Uh, so for the articulation, I mean, a wrist would be nice, um, but other than that, it's pretty much perfect, so I'm going to give it a nine and a half. A 10 for the look, uh, sorry, a 9.5 for the articulation, a 10 for the transformation, and a 9 for the look. Overall, I think it's a 9.5. I think it's, well, yeah, 9.5. I think it's a tremendous sound wave as long as it doesn't yellow. If it yellows, then that drops it to a 1 or a 0 because that ruins it, right? Case in point, I had to do a ton of paint on Starscream because of the fact that he turned yellow. Um, luckily, Megatron was always a bit of an off-white color, kind of a creamy color anyway. Uh, this is, of course, the rest of my Shattered Glass Decepticon group um, with Slicer and Exosuit and Starscream and Megatron and Soundwave and Laser Beak and Ravage. And that's really... Why didn't he stand up? That's really like all of the Decepticon forces, except I think Flame War. I, I'm not really connected to her, you know. I, 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 my experience with that mold was abysmal with Road Rocket, so. Mm -hmm. But as far as Soundwave goes, I think it's a great set. Wonderful set. T tons of paint. The guy is molded in white, except for the translucent blue. Outside of that... Everything on his head, on his forearms, on I think even his feet, on his knees, all of it, paint. Tons and tons of paint here. I respect that. I think he's a great addition to the Shattered Glass Decepticon cast. I think it's a great mold. The weakest part here is Ravage. Like I said, I broke mine. But as you can see, he can still transform, no problem. He'll just never be a shield. I can live with that for all the rest of the awesomeness that this guy brings to, to the table. And here we are once again, and here they are. So, let's start off with Ravage. Poor Ravage. So, it's so weird. When I was doing uh, the review for Ravage, and when I started to do the transformation, I accidentally forgot to fold down the bottom part of his hind legs, basically. And I was trying to pull his head up by the little peg in here. And the little peg broke off. And I remember at the time... 
of recording, thinking to myself, uh, that wasn't the fault of this, that was my fault. However, um, in retrospect, no, no, it was the fault of this, because you're supposed to be able to leave him in cassette mode and pull up this peg and it becomes like his shield or buckler. He'll never be a shield or buckler because, however, I guess the pin was put through this gray piece, uh, it was far too tight and instead of folding up, it broke off. Normally I would go to a store and I would return it, but since this is something that had to come from the U.S., from Pulse, that doesn't really um, uh, deliver to me, I had to source it through somebody else and now it's just broke and such is life. Now it's not a big deal because I never ever ever in a billion years plan to use this guy as a shield anyway, but that shows one of the major problems with making all of this online retail stuff be uh, exclusive. Normally, if it was just released in stores, you take it home, if you had a breakage like this, you'd go, you'd return it, and you'd get another one. You can't do that now. It's the same sort of problem with scarcity economics, it's the same sort of problem with reducing your amount of inventory, it's the same sort of problem with, uh, you know, trying to drive up price by having uh, low production numbers, right? you get stuff like this happen. Like I said, it's not a huge deal breaker for me, but it is something worth noting that breakage was an issue here, and it's unfortunate. The <coughs> Ravage Mold was never that strong to begin with. But then we get to this guy, and this is um, Laserbeak, who in the most recent uh, comics is basically media. He's basically a reporter, right? Which makes sense for this guy. Uh, a lot of gray plastic here, but man, oh man, oh man, so much paint. Certainly all of the red and silver is. I'm still trying to figure out if the dark gray, like the gunmetal, is paint or not, and I'm not sure. If it's plastic, it has a nice, nice sheen on it. This guy feels premium. Top to bottom, this guy feels premium. I think he might be the most painted of all the cassettes. And then we get to Soundwave himself. And I love the look of them. I really do. And I'm glad that we don't have the white front here. I know that the device label one is all white on the front, but I always thought that it was too much white. This is kind of a nice homage to the color layout of the deluxe version of him that used the classics Ironhide like van mode while giving him his classic uh, cassette player mode. Um, I'm feeling some gritty white plastic here, and I am concerned about the potential for discoloration, which has been reported with this mold. But, as it is, if everything stays the way it is, man, oh man, is this beautiful. I think pretty much everything is white, and all the color that you see, really, other than the translucent here, is paint. Like... <clears throat> I think the green is paint down here. I think the silver around is paint. The metallic blue on the arms and the head and the feet, all that's paint. And it's a beautiful metallic blue. Uh, the green on his headband, I, I, I'm really kind of smitten with this. I will say this, though. When I hold him compared to the Netflix one, the plastic feels thinner? I don't, it's not. I mean, he's the same mass and everything. It's not, but there's something that doesn't feel as premium about some of the plastic on this guy. Like, you can... It's a tactile sense is all I can say. It doesn't affect functionality. I don't believe anything's going to break or anything like that with him. He feels solid. He feels good. And if anything, I think that the um, arms are better tolerance than they are on the... Um, Netflix one. Yes, there's still a ratchet here, but it's not a scary ratchet. And I've heard on the Netflix one of under here stressing because this ratchet's so tight. Not the case here. I, I would have been fine if they'd used the Siege mold. Uh, they used this one, and I'm fine with that too. Uh, I, I like them. I'm glad to have them. I think if you are a Shatterglass fan and a Shatterglass collector, certainly for the Decepticons, who are generally outnumbered anyway, at least having Megatron, Starscream, and Soundwave, I mean, is pretty darn quintessential, if you ask me. Uh, yeah, big fan of him. Big fan of him. Pretty disappointed in him and his breakage. Make of that what you will. He scored well. He scored well. 
Obviously, he didn't. It is what it is. But I am a fan of Shattered Glass, and I am a fan of Soundwave. What do you think about Soundwave and his minions? Um, do you think that it was a, a good use? Do you think it was a bad use? I always appreciate you guys coming by, giving me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon, see what we have to offer to you through Spring, or of course, hit the join button at any given time and become a channel member. Um, also, please hit the subscribe button, stick around, have some fun with us. I love having you guys here. And especially don't forget that somehow, man, some way, each and every single solitary day, you do make a difference in the world. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights, at the stop motion premieres, or the old fashioned way, right here, inside the videos.